Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev, bringing you another SQL tutorial and this is going to be focused on stored procedures, particularly output parameters. Don't forget if you do like the video please do hit that thumbs up button and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you're interested in SQL programming, business intelligence or data analysis uh, then subscribe for some great content. So output parameters from stored procedures. They enable us to return a value to the calling program. So if we want to execute a stored procedure, we want to then take a value from that stored procedure and then do another action using that value. The parameter is created as normal, but we add in the output keyword, which will become apparent when we go through an example shortly. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be passing in uh, an employee name and we're going to be returning the position of that employee. Maybe we need to return the position of that employee because depending on that position, we carry out a certain action. Don't forget as well, you can also now support me on Patreon and I'll put the link in the description below. But now we're going to jump over to SQL Server Management Studio and we're going to go through some examples. In SQL now, we've got a simple select statement from our table employees. We're just going to get the first name, last name and the position. We want to be able to create a stored procedure that allows us to enter the first name and last name of our employees and it's going to return that position for us. From there we want to complete another action which is outside the scope of this video but we're going to go through how to create the stored procedure with an output parameter. So if you are new to stored procedures there is a video on my channel on how to create them so do go and check that out before you watch this video and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Whenever we're creating an object with in SQL Server we always start off with create and the name of the object. In this case we're going to be creating a procedure. You can just write proc, it's my personal preference to write out the, the full name. Uh, and then we're going to give this store procedure a name. So I'm just going to call it SP return employee position. So it's important to name your store procedures something that would mean something to you. Uh, typically in a database we'd have a, a massive amount of, of stored procedures so it's always good to give them a short concise name that would mean something to everybody. Uh, there's no point just giving it a name as SP1, nobody's going to be able to recognise that and they're going to be able to have to open the stored procedures to see what the details are. Uh, then we're going to list our parameters. Uh, so our first uh, parameters are going to be our input parameters. So what are we going to pass into this store procedure? We're going to pass in first name uh, and we're going to give it a, a data type. So our, our parameters begin with, a, with, the, with the at symbol uh, and we just enter them within a comma separated list. Uh, so we'll enter last name. It's the same data type of Varcher 50. And then our third parameter is going to be our output parameter, what we actually want to return. So I'm just going to give that a, a name as normal as I would set up with an input parameter. I'm going to give it a data type, but then I'm going to write the keyword output. So I'm telling uh, SQL Server, I'm creating this stored procedure. Uh, all parameters are input by default, but this one is output. So I add in the keyword. And then we're going to move on to creating, uh, I'll just remove the results grid there uh, and I'll remove that from the top so we can get rid of our squiggly line under our create statement. So I'm just going to wrap this within uh, a block, so we're going to begin. So we're going to select and what we want to do is select at position, so this is our output parameter and that's going to equal employee position. That's going to be from our employees table and that's going to be where employee first name equals our input parameter of first name and our employee last name 
equals our input parameter of last name and then I'll just end that block there so this is how we've got the the store procedure set up so we've got our create statement as normal uh, as mentioned with our output parameter we have the keyword output and then we're actually setting that value within our select statement within the store procedure it's also worth mentioning if you was to have employees with the same first and last name so two results would be returned you're likely to get an error I'm only using a simple table of data to demonstrate output parameters so I know the the input parameters I'm going to pass in the values I'm going to pass into this store procedure will only actually return me one result so we go into the employees table passing in the first name and last name and we're returning that position so that's part of the select statement so if I go ahead and execute that now that store procedure has been created successfully so I'll just comment this create out uh, just so that's not executed again and scroll down so we've got some area to work with so then we're going to go ahead and execute our store procedure so the employee we're going to be looking at is, is Tony Smith so as normal we write the keyword exec uh, it's database object and it's SP return employee position and we're going to set our input parameters so at first name equals Tony and at last name equals Smith so we've got our execute statement now so if we go ahead and highlight that and execute we can see we now get an error here so procedural function expects parameter at position which was not supplied but we've defined that as a output parameter so we're expecting that to be returned but what we actually need to do is assign that to a, a variable within SQL so we're trying to return the value back to SQL uh, that is the the caller in this scenario so I'm just going to declare a variable um, so I'm just going to declare a variable uh, I'll just call it at pos set that as varchar 50 so then we now need to pass in something to the parameter so we're going to say at uh, position equals at pos output again we're going to say output the, v the value to this variable that we've created we're then able to select from that variable so if I go ahead and execute that statement now I spelt the parameter name incorrectly so I'll just amend that highlight the query again and execute that and I will just give that a title as position so if I go ahead and execute that now we can see we've got the position returned correctly as sales executive so we can see when we're working with output parameters it isn't quite as simple as not being able to pass them in so it's something that when we're executing the store procedure it will recognize that a value needs to be returned but then we need to return that value to something so it's not just automatically outputted for us so because we're using a SQL Server we're going to output that value to a variable and as mentioned previously if I then wanted to go on to use that value to pass into another action or object within SQL I then have that stored within a variable to use so we need to assign that output value to something within SQL and that's why we've used a variable here I didn't need to use a variable but variables are easier so I could have assigned it to pretty much any object temporary or permanent within SQL Server so I'll just go through the syntax of that again so if we look at the original select statement where I didn't pass in the output parameter so we got an error initially to say position uh, this store procedure needs position inputted so 
once we pass in position, so we initially declare the variable, then we set position to say, okay, our output parameter position, we want to assign it to our variable at POS, and then we have the keyword output again, and then we're going to select from that result. We could have also simply just printed that value. So I'll execute it again with the print just to see what that value is in our messages box. So I hope that's, that's cleared matters for you. If you have got any questions regarding store procedures with output parameters, let me know in the comments below. That was just a very simple example. As we move further, uh, we will, they will get more, more complex. Uh, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, check out my other videos on the channel. There's lots of great content on SQL programming, business intelligence, data analysis. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.